If you have less than $10,000, here are three of the best ways to get started in real estate. If you don't know me, I'm Antonio and I help beginner real estate investors who don't know where to start buy their first rental property with the step-by-step -step process. I'm the guy who wrote this book, The Beginner Real Estate Investor Playbook. So hit the subscribe button if you're new here. The first way is wholesaling. Wholesaling is great if you got tons of time on your hands. To put it simply, what you're doing is being the middleman between an investor and a seller of a property who needs to get out. You find a distressed seller or home using a website called PropStream. You get the seller to a agreed to sell their house for cheap, then you sell the option to buy the house for just a little bit more to another investor. Why would you do this? What you're learning to do is what's known as finding off-market deals. Off-market deals are a great way to get cheaper and better investments. So this is a skill that can help you down the road as an investor. And learning it now is going to help prepare you for a better future. Second, depending on how much time and effort you put in, you could make anywhere between $5,000 and $20,000 over one to six month period. Actually know someone that wholesaled a deal that made a million dollars between two properties but they've been doing this for years, have plenty of experience, but I just bring this up to show you the potential available to you. What are the cons of doing this? It takes a lot of work. Wholesaling is a numbers game. You're gonna have to reach out to tons of people, most of which are people that are gonna ignore your calls or texts or tell you to fuck off. But all it takes is one good deal to turn it all around. In fact, in the middle of 2021, I actually tried to do this here in Austin. I reached out to 10,000 people and I got no leads. But then I tried to reach out to 2,000 people in a city in Indiana and I got a couple. So it all depends depends on the market that you're investing in and how competitive that market is. The second con is that you might work for a few months without getting paid. Just like any business when starting out, you might work a few months, not get paid. I made videos for four years before I got paid. So let's go over a little bit about how this is done. Step one is to find a distressed property or owner. A distressed property is one that has issues with it. Like maybe it just hailed, so the roof needs some work. Or maybe it doesn't look good on the inside and it needs a lot of work before it can be rented out or sold. A distressed owner, on the other hand, is usually someone that is going through a hard time either financially or in their personal life. And maybe this is someone whose house is in pre-foreclosure because they haven't been paying their mortgage or they have a death in the family or maybe they're going through a divorce and they don't want the home anymore. You want to find these types of people in these types of homes because they are way more likely to sell and they want to get out of the house cash. So you're going to do this with tons of addresses. And the best part is our sponsor PropStream, which is who I use, you can do this all really easily. You can pull lists for whatever problems you have. Once you have your list of properties from PropStream, the second step is to skip trace the owner's information. All skip tracing is, is finding the contact information from an address. This will give you the phone numbers, the emails, the mailing address, and the name of the person. Now, not all of this information will be accurate. It depends on what source you use. So keep in mind that not everyone you reach out to on this list is gonna be an accurate phone number or an accurate person. The third step is to contact the owner. There's three main ways people contact the owner. Call, text, or mail. And within PropStream itself, you can actually send out postcards to people asking the owner if they would like to sell their property. The fourth step is to qualify the owner once they contact you back. Once you get on the phone with them, your job is to ask them questions to see if they're willing to sell, how quickly they're willing to sell, what price they're willing to sell at, the level of work required, how motivated they are, and a little bit more about their financial situation. If it seems like that they're motivated and wanting to sell quick, then you gotta go look at the property. If you do this in person, you're gonna go see it yourself, or you might wanna do this remotely and have someone who's on the ground help you. Step six is to take all the information in that you got from seeing in the property and on the phone call and use that to come up with your offer. The way you figure out your max allowable offer is you take the after repair value, multiply that by 0.7, meaning that that leaves 30% profit after repair value for the flipper to buy the house. Then you subtract the rehab costs, the holding costs, and your fee. Rehab costs are the cost to fix up the house. Holding costs are costs that you pay for like the mortgage, the taxes, utilities, while you're holding the property waiting for it to be flipped. And your fee is the fee you want to make. So maybe that's 5,000, maybe that's 10,000. So for example, if we have a property that has a $200,000 after repair value, your max allowable offer will be 200,000 times 0.7, which is 140. Then you need to subtract your rehab costs. And let's say for this example, it's 20,000. Subtract your holding costs. So let's say for this example, it's 2,000. And then let's say you want to make $10,000 for your fee. 140 minus 20 minus two minus 10 equals 108,000. That is your max allowable offer. As you can see, this is a very low offer price. So a lot of people are gonna say no, but the people who say yes, that's great for you. And if you can get the owner to agree to sell the house at that price, 
Now it's time for you to find an investor. Again, you can do this through PropStream by looking up in your area and selecting for cash buyer list. You're gonna call them and tell them you have a deal under contract and if they would like to see it, show it and show them the numbers behind it. And once you show it to a few investors, hopefully you'll find one that sells. In full transparency, I've never fully wholesaled a deal. I've made offers on properties off market, but I haven't been able to get one closed and find an investor for it. Mainly because I was the investor trying to buy the property, but I did everything up to making offers. And if you're gonna do any of this, I highly recommend you use PropStream because I use them throughout this process and even beyond them to help analyze deals. So I want to show you how easy it is for you to pull a list on PropStream. Okay, so let's say I search Austin, Texas here. I put that in the box and then what comes up if pre-foreclosures, let's say we were trying to target that. Boom, you got 36 properties that are in pre-foreclosure right now. You got 3,128 that are vacant. So if you wanted to find investors for PropStream as well, then what you could do is click on this cash buyers list. And now you have a list of properties, 31,000 of them owned by people who are cash buyers who bought the property with cash. Maybe you want to buy a foreclosure property. You got bank owned ones with 192 properties, but they have plenty of other searches and you can make your own search too. You could add it for vacant properties. You could select specific property types. If they're on market, off market, if there's any liens, and so much more. The second way to get started investing with less than $10,000 is partnerships. Partnerships are really good for people who've been learning a lot about real estate investing through books, podcasts, and YouTube channels. These types of people usually need to be really good networkers or have a really good network of people who might have money. You want to think like engineer, lawyer, doctor, business owner. What a partnership is, is when you work with someone, aka a partner, to buy a property. They come with all the money. They don't have a lot of time. You have a lot of time, and then knowledge or experience and you do the work to buy the property and you split the profits. The reason that they're going to give the money to you is because they don't have the knowledge to do all this stuff or the time and you don't have the money so you come together to work together to make the profits split. Maybe you're someone who has the time and the knowledge because you went through my book, my free course or my mentorship. So why would you want to partner up? When you invest in real estate and use none of your own money, you're getting an infinite return on investment. Even if you make one dollar from the property, one divided by zero is infinity. And the second reason is it's better to get 50% of a profitable property than it is to get 100% of no properties. I personally did this with my family members. My first property, I partnered with my brother and my dad. The middle five properties are partnered with me and my dad. And the last property I bought was with my dad, my brother, and my mom and I. This allowed me to keep buying properties and scaling after I spent all my savings on my first one. So how does this work? First, you gotta be going to events and be meeting people regularly, especially that are interested in real estate. Either you have these people in your life already, like friends and family, and these people trust you, or these are going to be new people that you're going to have to build trust with over the long term. You want to look for people who either have a house already and have bought it cash or have a lot of equity in it. People who have a high paying job or business. People who have retirement accounts with tons of cash in there and self-directed IRAs. Or people who you know who just have tons of cash in their bank account. Think engineers, lawyers, doctors, people who have businesses, people who have kids. These people are so busy and they want to make money outside of the stock market and their regular retirement accounts, but they don't have the knowledge and the expertise expertise how to, and that's where you come in. Talk to them about real estate investing. Bring it up like you would a friend. So for example, I'm talking to a friend and I would tell them a story about a property I was looking at the other day. So I was looking at this solid property the other day. If they're interested, they'll ask questions about it, about the real estate or the investing, like how's that going for you? And they might even say something like, I'm open to learning more about it. If they say that, say you partner with people and help them make them more money than they would in the stock market. Then set some time aside to have a deeper conversation to show them some of the properties maybe you're looking at or you've gone through already. I did this when I was about to start partnering with one of my friends. I created a whole two hour presentation to present to his family on why he should invest in this area and why this property was a cash flowing property. They'd be putting $100,000 in and I'd be doing all the work. Now, if these people wanted to move forward, you get a lawyer and accountant to write up an operating agreement, create an LLC and make sure that the structure is proper for you and your business. You'll open up the bank accounts, fund the account, open up a credit card, get pre-approved from a lender and start looking at properties. And if you don't know any people in your area, this is another use case to use PropStream. Look up the cash buyers in your area. Reach out to them and see if they're open to partnering on a deal. Now, don't go right in on trying to partner with them on the deal. Instead, reach out to them and talk to them about real estate. Build a relationship with these people. Don't just go straight in and trying to get a partnership right off the bat. Third and arguably the best way to get started investing in real estate if you have less than $10,000 is to do house hacking or a live and flip. This method is best for people who are currently renting out a property. They live in a good area to invest or they're open 
open to moving to really good investable areas. This is when you only need to put somewhere between zero and 5% down on a property. You'll live in it for one year. And if you buy an apartment or single family home, you can rent out the other bedrooms to friends or other people. Or if you buy a duplex, triplex, or quadplex, you can rent out the other apartments to other people. Or if you wanna flip properties instead, you can live in the property for two years. While you're there, fix it up and sell it for hire while avoiding a lot of capital gains tax. Why would you do this? Because if you rent out the other bedrooms in the house, you might end up in a situation where you can live rent free or own a house and not pay that much money to your mortgage. And then afterwards, you could turn it into a profitable investment instead of a house you were just living in. Also, it allows you to get a mini taste of what it's like to be a landlord or an owner of a property while also living in the property at the same time. So how does this actually work? First, you'll need to get approved for a few different potential loans, FHA loan, VA loan, USDA loan, conventional loan. And if you need a lender that has a lot of these options, just check the link in the description to work with one of them. Once you get pre-approved, start looking for a house or a multifamily house. When you're starting to look at houses, you need to decide which path you're gonna take. Either rent out the other units or bedrooms or flip the house. If you're planning on fixing up the house, a single family house or a condo might be better because those tend to appreciate over time and more people wanna buy those as places to live. If you're planning on renting it out, try looking for a duplex, triplex, or quadplex as those are a little bit better for rentals. If you're trying to flip, you need to make sure that you use the formula to figure out if the property works. The purchase price needs to equal the after repair value times 70% minus the rehab costs minus the holding costs. Notice this is only a little bit different than the wholesaler formula because in this case, the wholesaler is not in the scenario and doesn't have a wholesale fee. Rehab costs are how much you need to fix up the house and holding costs are the costs that you're gonna pay for the mortgage as time will goes on while you're living there for the two years and the utilities and all that stuff before you sell it. If you're trying to rent it out, on the other hand, you need to look for a house that meets these requirements. The profit equals the rental income minus the mortgage, the taxes, the insurance, the utilities, property management, and about 20% of the rental income saved to the side for repairs, vacancy, and capital expenditures. That needs to be greater than or equal to zero in order for it to, for you to be able to live rent-free. You're gonna keep looking at properties and keep making offers. Now, the truth of this whole thing is this. In order to invest in real estate, it takes some form of money. And if you're gonna try to invest with very little money, it's gonna take sacrifice, effort, work, and time that you're making up for not actually having the money. It's overall way more harder to do something like that than it is for someone with money. And that's just the truth. The best thing you can do is to fix your financial situation. If this is you, you're gonna wanna check out the first part of my free course where I go over everything you need to do to set yourself up to get out of debt, to fix your cash flow problems, increase your credit score, and set yourself up financially in order to be able to afford a property. And if you need help buying your first rental property, click the link below to book a call with my team to learn more about my mentorship or my done-for-you investment property service. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.